Hello everyone, welcome. We are looking at Find the Change, Part A, Lesson 9.5. Let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so for today, let's go ahead and have our four question check-in. Go ahead and make sure that those listening ears are turned on. You can show me that your eyes are on my screen. You can hold up cactus hands for me. Show me that you're not holding any toys, pencils, markers, or anything that could distract you. And go ahead and wave good morning to each other. You can put your hands down and take a deep breath. Go ahead and let that breath out. Are you going to give this lesson your absolute best? Give me two thumbs up. All right, friends. Remember that we are recording every lesson that we have here so that you can go back and watch the recording again if you ever need to. And don't forget about our classroom rules. Lesson goals for today. I can find the change in an add to problem. I can find a change in an add to problem. So good morning today. We are going to find the change in add to problems. We are going to learn more about when we start with something in a word problem, when we have a change that occurs, and then what we get is our end result. It's a great process, but to talk about this, we need to remember our problem solving steps. All right, let's go ahead and have some good old I do time where I show you how. I just want you listening, paying attention with your eyes on my screen, listening ears on. That way you know what to do when we work one together and we do time and then you work one on your own and you do time. Step one, understand it. I need to read the problem. Brewer has four cups of lemonade. His friends, Winnie, his friend Winnie brings some more cups of lemonade. Now they have 10 cups of lemonade in all. How many cups of lemonade did Winnie bring? Okay, so let's go ahead and underline and circle what is important in this word problem. So Brewer has four cups of lemonade. His friend Winnie brings some more cups of lemonade. Okay, so Brewer has four cups of lemonade and Winnie brings some more cups of lemonade. We don't know how much, but we just know that she brings more. Now they have 10 cups of lemonade in all. My question is, how many cups of lemonade did Winnie bring? Okay, so I know that Brewer has four cups of lemonade. That's a part. I know that Winnie brings some more cups of lemonade. However, I just don't know how much. And lastly, I know that in all, in all, excuse me, in all is code for total. I know I now have a total of 10 cups of lemonade is my total. Okay, how many cups of lemonade did Winnie bring? So I'm trying to find my missing part, right? I'm trying to find my missing part. How many cups of lemonade did Winnie bring? Okay, now I am going to plug in all of this into my start change end method. So I'm in step two, plan it now. Start change end. What did I start with? Well, I started, started, excuse me, with four cups of lemonade. Okay. The change is Winnie bringing more cups of lemonade. However, I don't know how much, so I'm just going to put a triangle here. What I do know is I do know that Winnie will in, and Broar together will end up with 10 cups of lemonade in all. So what is my change? That's what I'm looking for here. What is the part that I'm missing or the change that I'm missing? There are many ways you could solve this. You could count on from four up until you reach 10, or you could actually flip this problem around. I'm going to show you how to flip it around. Four plus what equals 10 could also be said as 10 minus four equals my missing part. Okay, so I could either um, count on from four up until I reach 10 and draw circles each time I count on. Or I could um, draw 10 circles and take away four to find my missing part or my missing change. 
That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to draw 10 circles. So here, what I'm using is, I'm using my start, change, end strategy to help me solve, as well as drawing a picture to help me solve. And I'm going to um, draw 10 circles here. And I'm taking away four of those. Ready? One, two, three, four. And now let's count how many we have left. One, two, three, four, five, six. Which means that 10 minus 4 equals 6. And it also means that 4 plus 6 equals 10. So how many cups of lemonade did Winnie bring? She brought 6 cups. Of lemonade. All right, friends. You can pause this video, take a brain break. When you're ready, come back, and we are going to practice We Do Time. I want you to come back with something to write on, something to write with. It could be a dry erase board, marker, loose leaf paper, pencil. Go ahead and make sure you have your materials ready, and then you can press play when you are ready to go. All right, assuming you're all ready, here we go. Let's practice we do time. We are first walking into step one, understand it. So let's read the problem. 13 balls are in a bin. Maria puts some more balls in the bin. 18 balls are in the bin now. How many balls does Maria put in the bin? Let's go ahead and circle and underline what's important to know in this problem. I know that I have 13 balls in a bin. I know that Maria puts some more balls in the bin. However, I don't know how many. I do know that I will end up with 18 balls in the bin now. My question is, how many balls does Maria put in the bin? So let's go over what we know. We know that we have 13 balls in a bin. That's the total, right? Um, I know that Maria puts some more balls in the bin, keyword more. There's going to be more added to that. However, I don't know how many. That's a part. I do know, sorry guys, the 13 was actually your part. I misspoke. <laughs> 13 balls in a bin, and then we have a missing part. So that's my first part, then I have a missing part. How many balls does Maria put in the bin? That is what I'm looking for. 18 balls are in a bin now, that's my total. And again, what am I trying to find out? I'm trying to find out how many balls does Maria put in the bin. So let's go ahead and move on to step two, plan it. I'm using the start, change, end method. I want you to draw this on your board. Start, change, end method that you see here. You can pause this video, press play when you are ready to continue. All right, so you should have start, change, end strategy, that strategy drawn. Let's go ahead and plug in what we've been given. So I know that I'm starting with 13 balls. The change is going to be however many balls Maria puts in the bin, but I don't know that number. So I'm putting a triangle here for my unknown part. I will end up with 18 balls total. That's my end. Okay. Now, maybe you want to subtract like I did in I do time. Draw 13 circles. I mean, draw 18 circles and take away 13 by flipping this um, strategy to where it reads 18 minus 13 equals what? However, maybe you're not super confident with subtraction yet, and that's okay. I will show you another way that you can do this. So another way we can do this is we can count on from 13 
up until we reach 18, and we can draw a circle each time that we count on. So I'm counting on from 13, and I'm going to draw a circle until I reach 18. Ready? 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Now, let's count how many times I counted on. One, two, three, four, five which means that my unknown part, sorry, that looks like a not equal to sign. My unknown part is five. So now I can erase where that unknown part is, that triangle, and write the number five. 13 plus five equals 18. 18 what? Um, sorry, not 18, five what? five balls because again what am I looking for how many balls does Maria put in the bin Maria puts five balls in the bin and that is my correct answer pretty cool right all right guys great work all right, friends, you can take a brain break and then come back to your seats when you are finished with your brain break and we will move on to you do time. All right, friends, we're in you do time. I'm going to help you with step one, understand it, and a little bit of step two, plan it. So let's go ahead and first read our problem. Eight people are in a store. More people come into the store. 15 people are in the store now. How many people come into the store? Let's go ahead and circle and underline what is important to know. So I know that there are 18 people in a store. I know that more people, keyword more, that means my amount is going to increase. More people come into the store. However, I don't know how many more. And 15 people are in the store now. So I will end up with 15 people total in the store. My question is, how many people come into the store? So let's go over what we know again. We know that there are eight people in a store. That is a part of the problem. My other part is that I know that more people will come into the store. However, I don't know how many. Okay, that's what I'm missing. I do know that 15 people will be in the store total because that keyword now tells me that. So what am I looking for? I have a part and I have a total. I'm missing a part. Now I can move on to step two, under, uh, step two, plan it, and I will go ahead and draw the start change and method. You will draw the start change and method as well. On your boards, because this is you do time. I'll put a S here, start, a C here, and an E here. Start, change, end. So let's go ahead and plug in what we've been given. I know that there are eight people in the store. That's what I'm starting with, right? The change is going to be however many more people come into the store, but I don't know what that is. So I'm putting a triangle here to show that that's my unknown part. I do know that I will end up with 15 people in the store all together. Eight plus what equals 15? I'm going to stop here because this is you do time. I need you to take it from here. Make sure that you have this on your board. What I would love for you to do is solve the best that you can. You can solve by counting on from eight up until you reach 15 and drawing circles to help you. Or you can solve by flipping this problem into a subtraction problem and then taking away to find the missing part. I want you to pause this recording. I want you to work it out the best that you can. Make sure you have the complete full 
correct answer at the end, how many people come into the store, blank people, okay? And then I want you to press play when you are completely done. After your learning coach has sent me a picture um, by email, class dojo, or text message of your work, then you can press play and you can see how I work out the problem and check your answer. All right, friends, I'm assuming that you are ready to be revealed the correct answer. Um, I am going to solve by flipping this into a subtraction problem. Now, you might have chosen to count on from eight, and that's okay. Um, if you get the same answer for the part, then that's how you know you did it correctly. So I am going to flip this into a subtraction problem. 15 minus 8 equals triangle, the unknown. So I'm going to draw 15 circles. Ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm taking away 8 from 15. So let's go ahead and subtract 8 circles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's count how many are left over. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Which means that my unknown part equals 7. 15 minus 8 equals 7. My change is 7. Okay. 8 plus 7 equals 15. 7 what? How many people come into the store? 7 people. How did this look compared to the work that you did? Were you close? Did you get it correct? Did you get lost? That's okay. That's why we practice, right? All right, friends, what did we learn today? Let's go ahead and go over what we learned. We found the change in an add to problem. Learning coaches, don't forget to show me a uh, to send me a picture of your students you do time on class dojo email or text message to receive credit for watching this recording. You guys did such an amazing job. You may log off and I'll see you later. Bye.